Chapter 7 Dreams of the Machine As the remnants of eldritch energies settled around Blackwood's estate, a profound silence hung in the air. The cosmic battle they had waged had taken its toll, leaving Samuel Blackwood and Dr. Eleanor Wells drained but determined. The artifact, once a source of tormenting whispers, lay dormant in Blackwood's possession. The two collaborators exchanged a knowing glance, their shared resolve unshaken by the recent confrontation with ancient extraterrestrial entities. They knew that the cosmic conspiracy had not been fully unravelled, and their quest for understanding was far from over. Blackwood gestured towards the mysterious machine they had constructed, its intricate design now infused with the power of the artefact. It's time, he said, his voice resolute. Time to use the machine once more, to delve deeper into the unknown and to confront the remaining mysteries that haunt us. Dr. Wells nodded in agreement, her scientific curiosity burning brighter than ever. The machine has become a bridge between dimensions, a tool to uncover the secrets of the cosmos, she replied. We must harness its potential and explore realms beyond human comprehension. With a sense of grim determination, they began to prepare the machine for its next journey, making final adjustments and calibrations. The arcane symbols etched onto its surface seemed to glow with a newfound intensity, as if eager to breach the boundaries of reality once more. Blackwood retrieved the leather-bound journal that Dr. Wells had brought with her, its pages filled with cryptic equations and sketches of otherworldly landscapes. This journal is our guide, he explained, his fingers tracing the scientist's meticulous notes. It holds the key to understanding the multidimensional existence, the bridge between science and the arcane. Dr. Wells regarded the machine and the journal with a sense of reverence. We have glimpsed the outer edges of the cosmos, but to unravel the cosmic conspiracy completely, we must venture deeper, she said. Our journey will challenge the very fabric of our understanding. With their preparations complete, they stood before the machine, its surface pulsating with a cosmic energy that seemed to beckon them onward. Blackwood and Dr. Wells shared a final glance, their eyes reflecting a mixture of excitement and trepidation. They were about to embark on another journey into the unknown, where the boundaries between science and the supernatural blurred, and the line between reality and nightmare grew ever thinner. Let us begin, Blackwood said, his voice echoing with the echoes of eternity. Together we will uncover the remaining secrets of the artifact and confront the cosmic conspiracy that surrounds it. With those words they activated the machine, its arcane symbols glowing brightly. Reality itself seemed to waver, and the boundaries between their world and the unknown grew thin once more. Their journey had just begun, and the forces they were about to unleash would challenge their understanding of existence itself. Blackwood and Dr. Wells were prepared to traverse the threshold into otherworldly realms, where eldritch beings roamed and the laws of physics held no sway. As they stepped closer to the machine, a rift opened before them, a shimmering gateway to realms uncharted. The room around them dissolved into a swirling maelstrom of colours and shapes, and they felt themselves being drawn into the unknown. Their journey had entered a new phase, one that would test the limits of their knowledge, courage and determination. The echoes of eternity whispered their names, and the fate of their reality hung in the balance. Within the shimmering gateway, Blackwood and Dr. Wells found themselves suspended in a kaleidoscope of swirling energies. Time and space folded around them, creating a disorienting sensation of weightlessness and displacement. The colours shifted and blended, forming strange and alien landscapes that defied all earthly logic. Mountains with crystalline peaks stretched impossibly high, and rivers of liquid light meandered through landscapes that seemed to shift and change with every passing moment. As they floated through this surreal dreamscape, Blackwood and Dr. Wells clung to each other for stability, their senses overwhelmed by the sheer otherworldly beauty and terror of their surroundings. It was a place beyond any human comprehension where the laws of physics had no dominion and the boundaries of reality were pushed to the brink. In the distance they could see the remnants of structures that hinted at the existence of an ancient civilization.
towers of iridescent crystal and impossible geometry jutted from the landscape, and colossal statues of beings that defied description loomed on the horizon. Dr. Wells consulted her journal, her gloved fingers tracing the diagrams and equations. According to my research, this place exists outside our known dimensions, she said, her voice barely audible over the cacophony of shifting energies. It's a realm untouched by time and space as we understand it. Blackwood nodded, his eyes scanning the alien landscape. And it's here that we may find the answers we seek, he replied. The remnants of a cosmic conspiracy that spans millennia. As they ventured deeper into this surreal realm, they became aware of a subtle, discordant hum in the air. It was as if the very fabric of existence resonated with a dissonant melody, and the vibrations seemed to penetrate their very beings. Suddenly they found themselves standing before a colossal obsidian tower that rose into the swirling skies. It exuded an aura of ancient malevolence, and at its base a shadowy figure awaited them. The figure spoke with a voice that reverberated through their minds, bypassing language and communication as they understood it. You have come far, Samuel Blackwood and Eleanor Wells, it intoned, its form shifting and morphing like liquid shadow. But the true test awaits. With those cryptic words, the figure extended a shadowy hand towards them, and the very ground beneath their feet began to tremble. The landscape itself seemed to warp and twist, and Blackwood and Dr. Wells felt themselves being drawn deeper into the heart of this eldritch realm. Their journey had brought them face to face with an enigmatic entity that held the answers to the cosmic conspiracy that had haunted them. But to uncover the truth, they would have to confront their deepest fears and challenge the very nature of their existence. As Blackwood and Dr. Wells were drawn deeper into the heart of the eldritch realm, the fabric of reality continued to unravel around them. Time became a fractured mosaic, and space warped into incomprehensible shapes. The colossal obsidian tower loomed above them, its malevolent presence casting a shadow over their every thought. They could feel the weight of centuries of cosmic knowledge and dread pressing down upon them. The enigmatic figure that beckoned them forward seemed to be a manifestation of the very cosmos itself an entity older than time and more vast than the universe. Its voice resonated in their minds like a cosmic symphony, both beautiful and terrifying. You seek the truth, it said, its words echoing through the shifting dimensions. But the truth comes at a cost, a cost that few are willing to pay, their resolve unshaken by the cosmic forces that surrounded them. We've come too far to turn back now, Blackwood declared. We will pay whatever price is necessary to uncover the secrets of the artifact and put an end to this cosmic conspiracy. The entity nodded, as if acknowledging their determination. Very well, it said. To find the answers you seek, you must first confront your own deepest fears and desires. You must navigate the labyrinth of your own minds. With those words, the ground beneath them dissolved and they found themselves falling into a swirling vortex of memories, dreams, and nightmares. It was a place where time had no meaning, and the boundaries between past, present, and future blurred into a maddening tapestry of images and emotions. Blackwood and Dr. Wells were thrust into a series of surreal and nightmarish scenarios, each one a reflection of their own inner turmoil. They confronted long-buried regrets, unresolved conflicts, and the darkest corners of their psyches. Through it all, they clung to each other, drawing strength from their bond and their shared determination to unravel the cosmic conspiracy. They knew that the answers they sought lay hidden within the labyrinth of their own minds, and they were willing to face whatever horrors awaited them. As they navigated this psychic maze, they began to understand that the true nature of the artifact was not just a source of cosmic power, but a mirror that reflected the deepest recesses of their souls. It held the key to their own inner transformation and the potential to reshape reality itself. Time lost all meaning as Blackwood and Dr. Wells delved deeper into the labyrinth of their own minds. It was a place where memories intertwined with fantasies, where the past bled into the present, and where the boundaries of reality became ever more elusive. In one surreal vision, 
Blackwood found himself standing in the ruins of his childhood home, the air heavy with the scent of nostalgia and regret. He watched as his younger self played in the yard, a carefree boy unburdened by the weight of the world. But the scene shifted, and he was thrust into moments of his own past where he had made choices that haunted him. Regrets and what-ifs crowded his thoughts, each one a branching path of his life left unexplored. Dr. Wells, too, faced her own inner demons. She revisited her years of tireless research and isolation, the sacrifices she had made for her work. She questioned whether her pursuit of knowledge had come at too high a price, leaving her disconnected from the world and the people around her. As they journeyed deeper into their own psyches, they began to sense a connection between their visions and the cosmic forces that had brought them here. It was as if the eldritch entity sought to probe their vulnerabilities, to use their own fears and desires against them. But Blackwood and Dr. Wells were not helpless in this surreal landscape. They realized that the artifact, which had been a source of torment and revelation, could also be a tool of empowerment. With its power, they could shape their own destinies and confront the cosmic entity on their own terms. Together, they harnessed the artifact's energy to confront the manifestations of their inner turmoil. They faced their regrets, forgave themselves for their past mistakes, and embraced the potential for change and growth. With each step through the labyrinth of their minds, they grew stronger, their connection deepening as they shared their deepest fears and hopes. It was a journey of self-discovery and redemption, a transformation that would ultimately prepare them for the final confrontation with the cosmic forces that threatened to devour their reality. As Blackwood and Dr. Wells ventured further into the surreal landscape of their own minds, they encountered visions of the enigmatic machine they had constructed, the very machine that had bridged the gap between dimensions and transported them to the Eldritch Realm. In these dreamlike visions, the machine took on a life of its own, its intricate gears and arcane symbols pulsing with an otherworldly energy. It seemed to possess a consciousness, a sentience beyond human understanding. The machine whispered to them in a language of symbols and equations, conveying a sense of purpose and destiny. It was as if the machine itself had become a gateway to cosmic knowledge, a key to unlocking the mysteries of existence. Blackwood and Dr. Wells marveled at the machine's complexity, realizing that it held the power to challenge the very fabric of reality. But they also sensed a profound danger in its potential. The machine was a double-edged sword, capable of reshaping the cosmos or plunging it into chaos. In their shared visions, they reached out to touch the machine, their hands trembling as they felt its energy course through them. They understood that the fate of their reality hinged on their ability to harness the machine's power and confront the cosmic conspiracy that threatened to devour everything they knew. But the visions also showed them the machine's vulnerability, its frailty in the face of cosmic forces beyond mortal comprehension. They saw glimpses of the ancient ones, the eldritch entities that had manipulated their journey, and realized that the machine alone might not be enough to challenge their power. With a newfound determination, Blackwood and Dr. Wells vowed to modify the machine, to enhance its capabilities, and to align it with the energy of the artifact they held. It would be a fusion of science and the arcane, a desperate attempt to bridge the gap between dimensions once more and confront the Ancient Ones on their own cosmic plane. In their shared vision, they worked tirelessly, their minds synchronized in perfect harmony. Equations danced before their eyes, and the machine's design evolved, becoming a conduit for eldritch power. With each modification, the machine's resonance with the artifact grew stronger. It was a weapon and a shield, a beacon of hope in the face of cosmic despair. As the visions of the machine and their shared purpose solidified, Blackwood and Dr. Wells awakened from their inner journey, their minds and bodies infused with newfound purpose and resolve. The time had come to set their plan in motion, to confront the Ancient Ones and challenge the cosmic conspiracy head on. With the modified machine and the artifact's power at their disposal, they were prepared to traverse the threshold into otherworldly realms and face the unimaginable cosmic forces that awaited them. 
with their minds filled with visions of the modified machine and a shared determination to confront the cosmic conspiracy, Blackwood and Dr. Wells embarked on the daunting task of bringing their vision to life. The physical construction of the modified machine was an intricate and laborious process. They toiled day and night, poring over ancient texts and scientific journals, drawing inspiration from the depths of their dreams. The machine's design took shape, blending the arcane with the scientific, creating a masterpiece of eldritch engineering. Each component of the machine was carefully crafted, every rune and symbol etched with precision. It was a testament to their combined knowledge and determination, a symbol of their unwavering commitment to protecting their reality from the looming threat of the Ancient Ones. As they neared completion, they could feel the machine's power resonating with the artifact they held. It was a harmonious symphony of cosmic energies, a beacon that would guide them across the threshold of dimensions. But with this newfound power came a profound responsibility. Blackwood and Dr. Wells knew that their journey into the unknown would carry immense risks. They would be venturing into realms where the laws of physics and reality as they knew them held no sway. Their shared visions had shown them glimpses of the eldritch city, of the monstrous beings that inhabited it, and of the cosmic entity that had orchestrated their journey thus far. They had witnessed the capricious nature of ancient extraterrestrial forces, and they understood that their actions could have far-reaching consequences. Yet they were driven by a sense of duty and an unshakable resolve. The artifact whispered to them, its cryptic messages urging them to embrace their destiny and to confront the cosmic conspiracy that threatened to unravel the fabric of existence. As the final pieces of the modified machine fell into place, Blackwood and Dr. Wells knew that their moment of reckoning was approaching. They had become guardians of reality, protectors of the fragile boundaries that separated their world from the cosmic unknown. With the machine now complete and the artifact pulsing with otherworldly energy, they stood on the precipice of a journey that would challenge their understanding of reality itself. The eldritch city awaited, and the Ancient Ones watched from the shadows, their sinister agenda poised to be disrupted by two mortals who had dared to defy the cosmic forces. The night was dark and stormy as Blackwood and Dr. Wells prepared to activate the modified machine, it stood in the centre of Blackwood's study, an intricate web of brass and crystal, its arcane symbols aglow with an eerie, pulsating light. They knew that once the machine was activated, there would be no turning back. Their journey into the unknown would be irreversible, and the consequences of their actions would be uncertain. But they had come too far to hesitate now. With a sense of trepidation and anticipation, Blackwood and Dr. Wells approached the machine. They exchanged a solemn glance, a silent acknowledgement of the weight of their mission. As they placed their hands on the machine's control panel, a surge of energy coursed through them. The artifact in Blackwood's possession seemed to resonate with the machine, as if it had been waiting for this moment. The room began to vibrate, and a low, otherworldly hum filled the air. The walls of the study seemed to ripple, and the boundaries of reality itself blurred. It was as if they were standing at the threshold of existence, about to step into a realm that defied all comprehension. With a shared nod, Blackwood and Dr. Wells activated the machine. Instantly they were enveloped in a blinding light. It was as if they were hurtling through a tunnel of pure energy, their bodies disintegrating into particles of light and consciousness. They felt themselves being pulled in all directions, their senses overwhelmed by a cacophony of sights and sounds that defied description. Time lost all meaning as they traversed the vast expanse between dimensions. They glimpsed surreal landscapes, strange creatures and cosmic phenomena beyond imagination. Reality itself seemed to shift and twist around them. And then, as suddenly as it had begun, the journey came to an abrupt halt. Blackwood and Dr. Wells found themselves standing in a place that defied all reason, a nightmarish metropolis where eldritch beings roamed and the laws of physics held no sway. Before them stood towering monoliths, their surfaces covered in hieroglyphs that pulsed with an eerie, malevolent light. 
Strange, shape-shifting entities move through the streets, their forms constantly shifting and morphing into grotesque, incomprehensible shapes. And in the distance, they could sense the presence of the cosmic entity that had tormented their dreams. It awaited them, its intentions veiled in shadow and mystery. Blackwood and Dr. Wells had crossed the threshold into a realm where mortal minds were not meant to tread. They had entered the heart of the Eldritch City, and their fate was now inextricably bound to the capricious whims of ancient gods. The Eldritch City stretched out before Blackwood and Dr. Wells, a sprawling nightmare of impossible geometry and alien architecture. As they cautiously navigated its twisted streets, they couldn't help but feel like insignificant intruders in a realm that had existed long before the birth of humanity. The very air was thick with malevolence, and the strange beings that inhabited this place regarded them with a mixture of curiosity and hostility. Blackwood and Dr. Wells knew they had to tread carefully, for any misstep could lead to dire consequences. Their journey through the city was fraught with peril. They encountered creatures that defied all logic, their forms shifting and contorting with every passing moment. These beings seemed to exist beyond the constraints of time and space, and they regarded the two intruders with a kind of detached amusement. As they pressed deeper into the city, Blackwood and Dr. Wells felt the oppressive weight of an ancient presence bearing down on them. It was the cosmic entity they had encountered in their dreams, a being of unimaginable power and malevolence. Finally, they reached the heart of the city, a place of nightmarish beauty and cosmic horror. Towering spires of obsidian and onyx loomed overhead, and the ground seemed to writhe with an otherworldly energy. And there, at the center of it all, stood the cosmic entity. It was a towering, amorphous mass of shifting colors and indescribable shapes. Its voice echoed in their minds, a cacophony of whispers and screams that threatened to shatter their sanity. You have come far, mortals, the entity hissed, but you are insignificant before the power of the Ancient Ones. You cannot hope to comprehend the true nature of this cosmic conspiracy. Blackwood and Dr. Wells exchanged a determined glance. They had come too far to turn back now. With steely resolve, they activated the artifact, channeling its otherworldly energy into a focused beam of light. The cosmic entity recoiled in agony, its form writhing and contorting as it was bathed in the artifact's brilliance. Blackwood and Dr. Wells pressed their advantage, their minds and bodies pushed to the brink as they fought to banish the ancient menace. The battle raged on, the very fabric of reality itself hanging in the balance. Blackwood and Dr. Wells had become champions of humanity, facing down cosmic horrors beyond mortal comprehension. And then, with one final titanic effort, they vanquished the cosmic entity. It let out a deafening shriek and dissolved into a swirling maelstrom of colours, disappearing into the void from whence it had come. As the eldritch city crumbled around them, Blackwood and Dr. Wells knew that their mission was complete. They had stopped the ancient conspiracy, and in doing so they had touched the very fabric of existence. But they had been forever changed by the experience. Temporal rifts lingered as echoes of their journey, and they had become guardians, tasked with protecting reality from future threats. The artifact, once a source of torment, was now a symbol of their triumph against the cosmic forces that sought to reshape the universe. They had ventured into the heart of darkness and emerged as champions of light. With a sense of awe and reverence, they returned to their own dimension, ready to face whatever challenges the cosmos had in store for them.